Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on methods in context, focusing on how to research pupils. The methods in context section of the AQA specification is one of the most difficult sections for students because unlike other question types, it's asking you to do three things at the same time. The aim of methods in context is to get students to think like a sociologist, and so you have to approach revising this topic in a slightly different way. First of all, you need to have knowledge of how you are going to conduct the research, so you need to know the strengths and limitations of the different methods. Secondly, you need to know what you are going to research, so knowledge and understanding of the different issues in education section is important. Finally, you need to know the characteristics of who you are researching and how they might react to being researched on a specific topic. And that is the focus of this video, examining some of the practical, ethical and theoretical issues sociologists might face when researching pupils. First of all, we need to consider the different types of pupils that we might study. Although the question doesn't usually specify who is being studied, over the course of the specification you will have noticed that pupils will have different characteristics based upon their social class, their gender or their ethnicity. For example, working class students may be seen as more anti-school than middle class students. They may be more fatalistic, may be more dismissive of authority figures, and this is something that researchers would have to take into account. Alternatively, middle class students with a pro-school attitude might be more likely to want to be involved in research. With gender, some issues will affect girls more than boys, for example subject choices or treatment from the opposite sex. Boys, meanwhile, may see education as feminised and be less likely to take part in research for fear of being mocked by their peers. Ethnicity also plays a factor. Some ethnic groups may be more compliant to researchers' demands, while others, such as Black Caribbean, may view a researcher with suspicion, particularly if they have been subjected to racialised expectations from teachers. It's also worth considering status differences between the researcher and pupils. As Laboff found when conducting research, black pupils were more likely to respond to a researcher from their own ethnic group rather than a white middle class researcher. One of the practical issues that researchers may face when conducting research with students is access. Students would need parental consent to be interviewed or access would be restricted by a gatekeeper such as a head teacher. Researchers would have to consider this, particularly if the topic they were studying might portray the school in a bad light, thus limiting access from gatekeepers. A second point is the relationship with the researcher. Researchers may be seen as teachers in disguise, and this could lead pupils to be less likely to give honest responses. Researchers may try and develop a rapport with students first in order to establish trust, but how might that impact on impressionable pupils? Another question to ask here is what type of pupils may be more likely to disclose information? Time is another practical factor. When can researchers access students? How will the school react to time being taken out of busy schedules? If the method is out of school, how long will it take the researchers to gather the information? Sample size is a further consideration. For example, on issues such as exclusion or truancy, how will the researcher be able to collect a large enough sample to make their findings generalizable? Could the sample be biased by having too many responses from one group, such as middle class, and not enough from another, for example, working class? These are all issues the researcher needs to consider when conducting research with pupils. There are ethical issues with conducting research with pupils as well. Aside from needing DBS clearance and gatekeeper access to research pupils, Researchers may be investigating issues that are socially sensitive for students, such as bullying, material deprivation, teacher labelling and racism, so researchers need to be sensitive to the feelings of students. Protection from harm is another consideration. Researchers might observe pupils being physically or emotionally harmed by the actions of their peers when investigating anti-school subcultures of bullying, or even teachers through racism and labelling. And it is their duty to look after the physical and emotional well-being of students. They may even cause harm, particularly if they develop a bond of trust with a student while posing as a teaching assistant or a counsellor, only to deceive them by reporting their findings in academic papers. Which brings us to a last point, anonymity and confidentiality. Pupils may face ridicule, particularly working class boys, if it is known that they have cooperated with a researcher. Alternatively, they may fear the repercussions if they disclose the behaviour of other pupils or teachers, and so it is imperative that anonymity and confidentiality is maintained. Finally, theoretical issues. 
When researching pupils, how valid is the information provided going to be? For example, if a pupil was observed in a classroom, would their behaviour change? In a group interview, how might pupils react in the presence of their peers? Would the information be influenced in any way, particularly when examining issues such as bullying or anti-school behaviours? Reliability is another issue. How likely is the researcher to be able to gather similar information from another group of students? Student experiences may be unique and therefore repeating the research from one school to another may not yield similar, similar results. Another issue to consider here are sociologist values. For example, how might a feminist sociologist view the interactions between male and female pupils if investigating harassment of girls in schools? How might Marxists be influenced by studying social class differences in, in attention paid to working class and middle class pupils? And finally, representativeness. With the diversity of pupils and the reluctance of some to cooperate, would research be able to find a representative sample? There are some methods that have been used more when researching students than others. Archer used unstructured interviews in her various pieces of research, which allowed her to develop a rapport with students and have the impact of being able to get more information from students on issues such as identity, labeling, and the impacts of setting and streaming. Covert and overt non-participant observations are useful methods in seeing the behaviours of pupils firsthand. However, there are ethical issues with covert observations and overt observations could be limited by the Hawthorne effect. Questionnaires are another method that can be used. Sullivan used questionnaires when investigating students' cultural capital. However, however they may require some further research to understand the meanings and motivations of actions, so it could be best used in conjunction with other methods and official statistics, which gives a researcher a broad view of trends in education, such as exclusions, university entrance and achievement. Of course, sociologists may use other methods as well, or even combine methods in what is called methodological pluralism or triangulation. That concludes this Tutor to You sociology topic video looking at methods in context and focusing on research in pupils. Thanks for watching.